Thank you so much for joining. Um, this session will be recorded, so we will be sending this out to everybody at a later time. Um, feel free to keep the chat open, ask questions, interrupt Steve. If you have questions, I'll be throwing them at him. If you just want to send emojis, exclamation marks, stuff you agree with, stuff you even disagree with. Um, you know, hopefully this will be both an entertaining and educational session. So without further ado, I will hand it over to Steve. Thanks so much for joining us again, Steve. You are very, very welcome. I do want to call out to some of my good friends so far. I see uh, uh, Mary Brogan, moi. Uh, I see my one of my old, one of the really the godfathers, grandfathers of sourcing, Glenn Guttmacher uh, at NVIDIA, uh, if you aren't connected with. By the way, connect with everybody here. And I think, does everyone get the attendee list so we, we can see who's shown up? Uh, that I'm not sure about, but everyone feel free to drop your LinkedIn. In yeah, the chat. drop your link, drop your LinkedIn and, um, you know, connect away. And uh, the, the, the wonderful thing about this community, uh, and I, I'm talking about, you know, the global community related to sourcing and recruiting uh, and, and all of the related professions is all of us help each other. And we've been doing it for, in, you know, for, you know, for Glenn, Mary, and myself for a few decades. Anyway. Thank you all for coming uh, and, and, and attending today. I'm going to talk about, uh, I, I, uh, you know, the 10, count them, 10 fundamental cornerstones of exceptional sourcing, uh, according to moi. And, and, and I say that because uh, you say tomato, I say tomato. These are my 10. They're based on, a, you know, a couple of years doing this, uh, but your mileage may vary with them. Uh, but one thing uh, to, to always keep in mind is um, sourcing is, is a profession that, that is just ripe for continuous lifelong learning. And so hopefully some of these things will, 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 will help. Some of these will, will help inspire you, will help uh, make you mad, will help you question what you do, will reaffirm what you're doing, anything like that. And, 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 uh, and as Kunwar said, any questions, I'm, I'm not monitoring the chat, so I'll leave it up to you, Kunwar. Uh, any questions, just shout them out at me, please. So let me get this mousey going. Uh, this is about me. I'm not going to bore you with this. Everyone's going to get the deck. Um, that's enough. Let's get to the good stuff here. Oh, by the way, one thing I do want to tell you, but I, 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 um, I, I have run recruiting, I've run sourcing, but I was an engineer for 15 years. And, and, and that's where you know, much of the inquisitiveness uh, you know, in sourcing is, uh, you know, comes from, um, I suspect my parents noted about it, uh, early, early on when I started taking stuff apart and putting it back together differently, I was probably two, three years old and had access to my dad's tools. Uh, that's when they said, you know, growing up during the cold war, you're going to be an engineer. Uh, little did I know that later down the line, I would surreptitiously and magically wind up in recruiting because I think like many here, uh, we didn't choose recruiting, but recruiting chose us. That's a topic for another day. So let's get into them. The 10 fundamental cornerstones. And, and each of these is going to be a, a slide and a discussion and hopefully uh, some uh, um, questions from you. And actually, I am going to move the chat a little bit uh, so I can actually monitor it myself. So put questions away. So the 10 cornerstones are ask questions. I know everybody here can read, but in case there are people who are, uh, you know, sight limited, uh, I'm going to help you out here. Ask questions. Know your role. Never assume. Keep it simple. That's the one thing that I've really focused on as I've gotten on in years in this profession teach the unteachable. Uh, if anyone here is, and I know Glenn and, and Mary have, and a few others possibly have seen me present inside the first two slides, I always ask the audience, okay, in the last 30 days, how many of you have wanted to kill, not literally, but kill a hiring manager? It, it gets a big laugh. Number six, develop an algorithm. Seven, learn something new. Eight, big one, explore rabbit holes. Nine, follow the leaders. And 10, probably the most, mo, more, most old school thing here is take the call. So let's get into them. Come on, slide, 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 slide. I'm dealing with multiple monitors here, so it's going to be a little bit tricky. Here we go. Ask questions. Some of the questions that I like to ask are, 
And I've, I've asked these through the years. I wonder why LinkedIn presents me with these results. Do you know about LinkedIn's algorithm? Do you realize that regardless of the search that you put in, you're not going to see everybody. They're going to present to you the people they think you want to see. And in the order that algorithmically it comes out, there are ways to get around it. Number two, what would happen if I changed up the search string? You know, sometimes, um, what's, the, what's the adage, uh, the saying, you become so good at using a hammer, everything begins to look like a nail. Using the same Boolean search string over and over again and being satisfied with the results is something that you should ask yourself, you know, am, am, am I serving my, 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 uh, my customers as well as I can? What if I did the search in, 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 in incognito mode? versus the mode in which it's tracking every, all, all, your, all your actions. Why do I always use Chrome? Uh, I'm sure Glenn has an opinion on this one because we've talked about it is, but you know, the, the, the more old school sourcers, we use minimum of three browsers to do searches on. What if I didn't ask someone if they were doing well? You know that thing that in mall you send out? I hope you're doing well. I mean, do you, do you receive those? What's your visceral reaction when you receive the, uh, you know, the in malls, I call them in malls that say, well, I hope you're doing well. Uh, so what if instead of pushing out 200 in malls each day, I sent only five personalized messages. That's it. You know, did my research, maybe it takes a half hour to find some good stuff on a, on, on a person. But what if just five, I wonder what my response rates may be click. I'm going to find, there we go. Know your role. Um, yeah, Glenn. Yeah. Yeah. And Glenn noted in, in, in the chat, it's just as important to use different search engines rather than different browsers, because, you know, you, you often, whether it's a uh, Firefox or DuckDuckGo or, or um, Opera or, um, oh, Glenn, help me, help me with the other one. Um, Brave. Um, and, 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 and by the way, there are at least 10 other pretty darn good open source browsers that you can use, but, you know, check to see that the defaults aren't all Google. There are multiple ways, multiple things. Yeah. And Paul, Paul West, thanks for coming, Paul, you know, Google custom search engines. That's for another time, but that's another way to do things, but know your role. I don't know if there are any professional, you know, <laughs> Netscape cut it out, Jeff. That's funny. Uh, know your role. Shut up. Know your role and shut your mouth. The intake session, uh, that's been one of my big um, pain points and success points through the years is what's the real job? I mean, if you're going, if you're strictly going by what the job description states and you're not getting into the performance aspects of the role, you're just going to get responses, you're, you're, you're going to be looking at a person just from, can they tick off a box rather than they can deliver, rather than they can perform the job. Uh, as Lucy says here to, to Snoopy, I've, well, I've always wondered why you decided to be a dog. And, and he says, well, I was fooled by the job description. How many times have you interviewed someone or sourced somebody based on the job description only for during the interview, the job to change? And to be told that, you know, we're actually looking for this, not that. A great intake session helps um, push that, you know, know your role agenda uh, across. And, you know, on, on my LinkedIn profile, and um, you're, you're, all, you're all sources, you all should be able to find, find me. Actually, it's in the first page. Uh, I, I, I have a couple of uh, decks that I've talked about through the years, that, which have all the different questions that I, that, that I pull from and choose when I do an intake, you know, discovery call. And, and the questions might be, uh, you're talking to the hiring manager, you know, in the first 90 to 180 days, what will a person have accomplished, delivered, produced, fixed, uh, improved, I think I said the word improved already, that tells you hiring them that was the right thing to do. Essentially, if your job description, if you don't know what the value proposition is, why would somebody leave Google? <laughs> Or, or Metabook or any other company to join your company? What would they be doing here that they wouldn't be doing there? If your hiring manager can't answer that, how will you be able to find the person? And of course, we have Dr. Evil 
job description. That is the bane of the existence of most people. Uh, that's if you go to um, if anybody here is a redditor and you go to um, Subbar Recruiting Hell, you'll see a great uh, uh, many many discussions that talk about the job description was wrong. Uh, I, it had nothing to do with what I was interviewed for. Don't be that kind of person. Never ever assume. Uh, you know, if if you assume you make what it was, you make an ass out of you and me. That's my first, you know, where's my, where's my bleep jar? Okay, I'll put a quarter in for that one here. Never assume that the hiring manager knows the deliverables of the role. Never assume that there's only one perfect place to find people. Show of hands in the chat. Let's be honest. If LinkedIn went down today, and it was going to be down for four weeks, and they said, you're not getting your money back, which is probably what they would do. What would you do? How would you source? Would you get a little bit of eh, little little nervous? Um, you know, it, it, be honest. Every, everybody would. You know, this, LinkedIn is the easy button. But you know, depending on what you're looking for, who you're looking, and whom you're looking for, you don't have. You know, there there, there are better places to find people with specific skill sets and experiences. You know, we'll, we'll talk about a few of those. Never assume that resumes are accurate. Um, I hope someone can put something funny in the chat. Maybe Glenn, Paul, Jeff, since you're already funny with the Netscape thing. Um, do you trust resumes? Do you, or, or do, you, do, do, do you exclude people because of their resume? If, you know, if, if they're close, do you ever wonder why? I wonder if I ask, if I don't have this here listed on their resume. But I know the connection between this and that, as Glenn says, resumes are a great exaggeration tool. Um, think about, you know, resume writers. Resume writers, more often than not, not all of them, but many of them, they're just trying to perfume a pig. They're trying to put a new cone of paint on a house that may need a little bit of, a little bit of remodeling, a little bit of uh, reconstruction work. Um, but they don't understand, you know, I think I put it up in a, in a, um, uh, LinkedIn chat that uh, Brendan Wright had written is that, uh, in, you know, the best resume is the one that the recruiter can't understand because it's so, it, it's in such, it's, it's in the language of the everyday, the everyday speak of the people who are doing the job. Uh, never assume that the sourcing platforms some don't like won't work for you. You know, we're going to be honest here. Um, I use Hire Easy. I use others too. Um, you know, some I like better than others. You're going to find that depending on what it is you're looking for, you know, platform A may give you this, platform B may give you that, and platform C may give you this. But over the course of, uh, you know, many searches, you're going to hone in on the one that works best for you, provided you know how to use it well. And Mary just had a good comment is, yet managers live and die by resumes. And they live and die by resumes because we haven't served them as talent advisors, you know, if you know that the hiring manager, when they read a resume, they pick out something that is so galactically stupid about a human, about another human being, and they use that to base their decision, their feel, and you don't say anything, you're not fixing the problem. Ultimately, as talent advisors, you're there to fix the problem. And finally, never assume that your messaging is great. Because another recruiter, the person sitting next to you, the person you're Zooming with or, or, or teaming with or uh, WebExing with or FaceTiming with, thinks it's a great one. Um, by the way, the, 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 the short on messaging is in the fundamental, really a core fundamental is if you're looking for an accountant, have people in your company in accounting or accountants you know, write, write and read the message. Would you respond to this? Does this, I mean, you, you, we, as recruiters, we can find it, you know, accounting jokes. We can talk about things that are flowery from our point of view, but would another person, would another accountant feel the same way? So don't just be the echo chamber where you, you know, show your fellow recruiter, look, this is a great look. What do you think of this? Oh, this is a great message. And then you don't get a response. There's my house again. Here we are. Four, keep it simple. 
Uh, just because Jung Kim writes the longest booleans this side of the Milky Way galaxy, it doesn't mean that you have to. By the way, if you're not connected with Jung Kim on uh, on LinkedIn, I mean, he, he's he's a good egg. He's a good person, and he's uh, very very helpful. Good person to know. Uh, keep your messaging focused. You know, hashtag I hope you are well. Please just kill it from you. Mean, yeah, we do hope they're well. You know, I I I am. Um, if you look at my link when you see my LinkedIn profile. You'll notice that I changed my first name to a brain emoji, and I'm I'm changing the mo the emoji every week. So my first name is an emoji, and my last name is Steve Levy. And I know when I receive messaging that says "Hi, brain emoji," the person didn't look at my profile. They're just in mauling. They're throwing as much stuff across the transom, and I've never seen people do that and not come to the conclusion that their messaging was so banal and mind numbing. Keep it focused on the job. You know, uh, you know, Mike, uh, Mike Cohen, Mike Batman has some good insight. You can just, you know, do a internet search for, uh, you know, recruiting engagement messaging and, and see many, many different points of view on this one. Uh, as some people here know, I tend to be very detailed in my messaging. I focus on the value proposition. I focus on the val on, on the on the problems that someone is likely going to be solving. You know the kinds of problems that make you make 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 a person's brain hurt in a good way. I want them to come to read it and go, we're, we're we're not doing that here, and we'll never be doing that there. Yeah, I want to find out more about it. Number three, keep your assessments focused on performance. Um, I'm just wondering, would anybody here uh, uh, admit to it in the chat that? They use things like uh, spirit. What's your spirit animal? As part of the as, as part of the interview process, or they uh, you know, they ask uh, people to do certain things like you know like wonderlick tests, things of that nature. I'm I'm just wondering if you'll if you'll admit to that, because if it's not performance focused, um, I don't know about you, but I, I'm I'm not a registered psychotherapist in New York, so. Um, uh, I, I think if when 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 I take make an assessment of somebody, I'm I'm not going to comment on their personality. I'm going to comment on their likability. Like, man, they were they they just were. I tried to get them to slow down, and they kept talking over me. Um, and, you know, they told some off color jokes. Uh, think th those those are kind of obvious, but I'm hiring someone to solve problems. If the manager, if the manager's job to manage all the different people you don't you don't you don't want a situation where the manager hires everybody who's the same because it becomes an echo chamber which lends itself to the next bullet is culture fit likability and get along ability or protocols for bias when 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 someone says i just didn't feel they were a culture fit challenge that you know as a source when when you when if you're the if you're a source that hands off to recruiter recruiter Find out, look at the debriefs, look at the feedback forms, read them, and, and, and identify the pieces that are very, very subjective. And then find out how, you, how, how your sourcing uh, interacted with, how that caused such a, a subjective assessment. Maybe, you know, talk to the hiring manager with the recruiter and find out what do they mean? You know, what, how can that translate into something you can look for that is, uh, objective, that is verifiable, uh, that is performance based. Give it a shot. And by the way, uh, I, I know folks aren't going to jump and say, uh, you know, admit to it, but uh, you know the fake it till you make it maxim, uh, the adage that 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 in rec recruiting has seemed to live and die by. Um, don't fake anything. It doesn't matter what you do. You can be a horse and put a pilot on your head, you'll never be a unicorn. Uh, and that lends itself towards the next fundamental, according to me, if I can find my mouse here, and that is teach the unteachable. Uh, source with the hiring manager. It's literally set time aside after your intake strategy, or maybe at, at, right after it. You know, I, I heard what you said. 
let's try to look at some things together. And this is where, you know, it, it's okay to use LinkedIn at this point. There's nothing wrong with doing that as a quick and dirty uh, show and tell of your skills. And, you know, we'll get into, you know, some other time, you know, how to use you know, LinkedIn recruiter more effectively, or better yet, how to use LinkedIn outside of LinkedIn. And that's another lesson for, for another day. Um, and again, I'm focusing this on tech, but and, and it could be, you know, go to a tech meeting, go to a finance meeting, um, you know, something external, a conference, love conferences. As a sourcer, <laughs> thank you, David. Um, as a sourcer, um, you know, going to these things, you know, seeing, seeing your quarry in action, seeing them live, seeing their quirks, seeing their, you know, their, all, all the fun things they do when they're around other people, is very it, it it's a good lesson to understand that there's a human being behind these things but if you go to always go to if you can go to a conference wherever someone in your company is speaking or you know uh, you know local locally if, you, if there's a major hotel you can you can go to their website and see what events are coming up and you know you can always stalk the hall st i said stalk i'm sorry i didn't mean to use the word stalk you can stalk the hallways during some of these conferences but go them and show them how to network you know, little things like, hi, how you doing? Show them small talk. Um, go over a, a conference agenda. Uh, you'll hear a lot of us will say that, you know, conferences are an absolute gold mine. You know, in the old days, when we'd go to, um, we'd, we'd, we'd go to, um, you know, conferences, we'd see what other uh, associations or organizations were holding uh, meetings in that same area. Yeah, old days as in last year. But what used to be is, and they still do this. You can go to a conference and you see all the name tags are laid out on the table. You know, that's when you just take your phone out and go click, 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 or just you know, take a whole video thing. And it's magic. Go over the agendas of past uh, and, and, uh, and current meetings with the hiring managers and say, is this a topic that interests you? Hmm. Show me more how you do that. Partner with them to write your messaging. You know, better yet, get them on video talking about the job. These are things that, and you know, the more they start seeing what we do, you know, have them, you know, if they get any um, uh, newsletters that pertain that that are in their area in their inbox, ask them what articles you find interesting. Read them. Oh, they so and so said something. What if we reached out to them? Never thought of that. Uh, you know, from a pure uh, you know tech standpoint. Uh, you know, engineers seemingly, by the way, they're not hard to find. They're just hard to come to, to get to your company. And that goes to the value proposition. But review open source contributions together with the hiring manager. You know, the Cloud Native uh, Foundation is a great one. That's everything you probably know as buzzwords or phrases or elements of your job description came from cncf.io, you know, Kubernetes, open telemetry, uh, ad nauseum. No, that is not me, David. Develop an algorithm. This is, this is the algorithm that I use almost in this order when I do sourcing. Um, <clears throat> and, and your mileage may vary. You can change the order. You can take things out. You can add things. But these are things that have worked for me over the years. Um, I always start with some basic Booleans. And, and my Boolean start with wide funnels. And even, if, even, even when, when using a sourcing platform, I still want to get the lay of the land uh, to see if anything has changed because, you know, the world's dynamic. So I'm going to use things like I'm going to site search, you know, github.io if I'm looking for uh, uh, engineers. I'm going to look at conferences, associations, communities. I'm going to get these from doing the intake sessions with the hiring managers. You know, and there's a there's a website, sketch.com, and you can um, I'm gonna type it type it into the chat unless Glenn beats it beats me to it. Um, you can do things like com, I N U R L boom speakers colon ten D's and then title. Hold on, hold on, almost there. If you see this in there in the chat. You know, title could be software engineer in quotes. It could be accountant in quotes. It could be chief, it could be compliance analyst in quotes, whatever it might be. 
And then many cases, you know, you can put limiters on it by, and I'll put it in the chat, let's say you want to see more current stuff. So after the title, you can do things like this, 2020.2022, that'll limit results that Google pulled in the last two years. Awards, every function, every industry has awards. I like looking at people who've won awards. Certification, verification sites. If you're looking for something, uh, someone who has a certain certification, more often than not, you can find the certification site. And sometimes it may ask you to put in first name, last name, this and that. But I found sometimes if you just put in a space, you'll see everyone listed out. It's on a case by case basis. Newsletters, blogs, forums, places where people you look for, people you covet, interact with each other. I go there uh, because I often deal with things that are a bit more esoteric from the tech side. Um, I, I will also use the INURL uh, research. Many, many companies, including ones that Glenn, have, Glenn has worked at, have research sites. Like, for example, and I'm going to put it in the chat. If you go to one of Glenn's old employers and you go here, you'll see all the people who work there and all their contact information. It's like a, it's, it's a source gasm. It's that easy. And finally, social media, um, depending on what you're looking for, social media may move up. If I'm doing highly technical stuff, technical people seem to like social media more than others. And what I have on, on Twitter as, as, as an example, I have, I've, I've tagged certain hashtags, so I just see these first. And, and every morning, I will go through them. And if I see someone who writes something insightful or intuitive or funny, I'll follow them. And yes, Mr. Moore, exactly. Uh, and, and I'll follow them and I'll see if I can, and, 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 and I'll find their, their email and I'll tell them that their tweet was fun. And I know it looks a little like cyber stalking, but in recruiting, we call it research. Seven, learn something new. Um, ask your tech teams, ask your finance team, ask your customer success team if they're experimenting with new stuff, if they're looking at new technologies, if looking at new processes, new, new, new strategies. Uh, read up on talks given by people on your team. Uh, discuss it with them. You know, uh, ask people uh, on the team, you know, what blogs they read. You know, show me, show me, show me. Uh, ask them, uh, you know, where they go to talk openly about what's happening in their in their field go to these things you know create um you know uh, bookmark them uh create a schedule uh in many cases you can create a, a google alert so you can see when new things are coming in look at the courses people you covet have taken and take them yourself uh again i'll give a uh, you know linkedin with um you know, all the linkedin certifications there if there's someone you covet and they're taking a certain course take it you become better uh more aware of what they're going through and create a course <clears throat> to teach others in your group let's say you're uh you're doing something in finance or, or something in compliance or security uh and you want to look at and you know company is going through a SOX 2 audit you know create a little course and it may just be a couple of slides that you can use to give to, to give, give give to you know to give to your team and, and, you know, and just, you know, let learning be something that you, you, you learn yourself and then give it to others. Uh, this is something I did here. Here, here, here it's it. We were talking about uh, uh, migrating from Kafka to, you know, looking at, at the pros and cons of Pulsar versus Kafka. And, and these are both, you know, different um, data ecosystems, if you will. And, but each is different. Each has a different different ramifications on the build. And I, and I, and I had, I've, I, I actually hadn't heard of Pulsar. I knew Kafka for years. So I went in and I just, for my sake, read up on it now. And, and, and this is just as an example, but I did this cause I, I heard some, I, I, they were talking about something that I had never heard before. So me being the, you know, the, the, the nosy person who likes to go down rabbit holes, which is next, I had to find out about it. It was bothering me, you know, I, 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 I passed the I'm show of hands thing, but when you read a book 
and you come upon a word that you don't understand, do you hum over it or do you look the word up right away? I don't hum over words. I have to look up the word right away because I'm going to lose some, I'm going to lose some context if I don't do that. In my opinion, be the type of sorcerer and recruiter that who is an insatiable learner and you want to give, you learn it for yourself, but then give that learning to other people. Questions at all? Anything? Anybody? No problem. My favorite rabbit holes. Um, you know, I think that's how uh, in, in the early days of, uh, of sourcing the digital era, and uh, that's when Glenn and I first met. We, I, think Glenn, uh, I think you and I met somewhere around the turn of Y2K, if I'm mistaken, might have been a little earlier. But there were a few of us, uh, you know, SourceCon, ERE. I'm mean, one of the original members of, of ERE. So this was back in the days where we had a group of people and uh, who, who you know all of them by name. We would spend hours at night going down rabbit holes and going back and forth. Did you see this? Did you find this? And it just made for probably the most, the, one of the richest learning experiences I've ever had in this profession because you're learning from people who were just as inquisitive and kooky as I was. And they were equally um, driven to try to figure out why does this work this way? Yeah, you probably could, Glenn. You, you know, it, it, somewhere along the way, back it, back then it was known as what, Glenn, erexchange.net or com. You'll remember better than I am. You're younger. Um, but rabbit holes are the key to really becoming an incredibly great sourcer. And, you know, find a great site or visit one that's recommended and click away on every link. Get to know how pages are structured because there is, uh, there, 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 there is a commonality amongst websites. So, you know, look, find one like the cncf.io. If you do tech stuff that, that was here earlier, play with it. Go look at all the magic and just glorify an incredible cornucopia of, 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 of insight and people there. Look for patterns in, in, in the web address, or I say Earl, but, you know, it's just a weird thing that I say. And then X-ray, you know, so see, go look for patterns in, in, in the web addresses. You're going to see things, and that's going to help you become um, actually a better sourcer because you're going to learn how to X-ray or dig deep into a site using the site command. Uh, read a site source code. Look for titles, links, and Easter eggs. You know, if you go, uh, you know, if you're on a website, if you go right click, view source code, you'll you'll see where things like, oh, that's what title is. That's what, um, uh, you know, the URL is. This is where, you know, if you look for, if you use the in text, that's where this is coming from. Look at the source code. Many cases, in 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 many cases, in fact. You may see some Easter eggs, some comments there. Maybe a website, you know, someone's personal website, it doesn't list their email address, uh, you know, overtly in, in the contact me, but perhaps in the source code, it's listed there. I don't know. Uh, learn about the joys of open source sites. Typically, these are the ones that end in .io. So you can actually site search. David Marr took his funny pills today, so I'm not going to answer his question. Uh, but, uh, you, know, you know, you can site search. Like, for example, you can do things like you can go site colon IO in URL, just like resume. Something simple like that. I believe in, I, I like broad Boolean strings and then narrow them down. Um, if, you're, if you're a tech person, um, and, uh, you know, you're trying to find who else can I talk, who else can I speak with? Who else, you know, can I, can I, can I, can I, can I reach out to, uh, I have something called followers and forkers. And I know it sounds really profane, but it's not anybody knows GitHub. 
um, you know, someone, you know, what, what I do wherever, wherever I am, I, I go to my engineering org and I ask them, I want everyone's GitHub repository. And then when I do, I look at the people who follow them or the people that they follow as well. And I'll put, I'll curate a list and I'll go to them. Do you know that these people follow you? Do you know that you follow them? What do you think about them working here? And then uh, the concept of forking is if they have code repositories, forking is essentially somebody copying your code. That means there's something in there that they liked. So if there are some really prolific engineers on your staff and they uh, have code that is forked by other people, you know, think, th think, think of the, uh, you know, the messaging, think of the strategy there. You're reaching out to people. Hey, by the way, I noticed that you're forking you know, this code of so-and-so who works here. I'm making this up on the fly. How do you like to work with them? It's just little things like that that you don't know. Instead of just using GitHub or Stack Overflow, there are an inordinate number of other alternatives like GitLab, Bitbucket, Gitbucket, AWS CodeCommit, SourceForge, Google Cloud Source Repositories, Fabricator, Gitea, Apache Allure, Launchpad. All of these, it's just like browsers and search engines. You know, you, you can go down rabbit holes and you will find that many of these produce much better results because you're not going to be like, you know, let's take LinkedIn fishing at the same pond with the same pole, with the same line, the same reel, the same hook, the same bait, the same spot, the same time of day as everyone else. You're being unique. Rabbit holes allow you to find that uniqueness in you. Patents uh, are the secret sauce. I, I almost went to law school some 30 years ago. So, uh, you know, I was doing software engineering. I got pulled into uh, intellectual property for some reason. And I said, hey, I'd like to become, I'd like to go to law school, become a patent attorney. We'll pay for it. Oh, sounds good to me. I was young and dumb. And so uh, that's when I first started um, using patents as a source. And uh, we can do this at a, at a later date because this, this could be a cool little uh, mini webinar. I like free patents online because it allows me to download more people. Uh, but, you know, you can look for, you know, your competitors and you, and, and it gives you the names of the people who are the inventors and where they live. Uh, but that's another way when you're doing highly technical stuff, that's something to do. Domains are divine. Uh, if you go to iana.org, you know, don't just always look for domains that end in com or edu or org. org. There are so many others, and each of those is an area that others have likely not explored. Be the explorer. Yes, no, 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 no. They absolutely are because that the, the the publication schedule is much tighter. So that's a that's a really good call out. But the good thing from free patents online, you actually can search the the EU patents as well. So that's a really good call call out. Follow the leaders, and 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 I don't mean people like Glenn or me or more any other people. It's the people who are the, and I hate the word because it, 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 it just reminds me of, you know, Kim Kardashian, the influencers. Um, when you talk to the people who are doing the job who are hiring for the job that you are referring, that, that, that you're recruiting for, you know, who do they follow? Who do they read? Um, you know, it's not stalking, it's relationship building. When you hear that somebody is, you know, look, I read their blog, find their information, send them, find their email, tell them why you're reaching out to them. I just want to let you know that uh, your blog was identified by so-and-so here as the one that is a must read. I started reading it. You got some really good stuff there. Keep it short, keep it sweet. There's a concept of getting to yes, which is, you know, what we try to do and, and, and many you, you've seen this in the messages that I'm sure all of you have received. I love your profile. You're a perfect fit. Send me your resume. Uh, what's your salary? When can you interview? It's like, oh, come on, man. Just can you slow down a little bit? I don't even know your name first. Um, relationship building is, is little yeses, 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 until it gets to the point where they say, you know, we're like, we're old friends. Yeah. So, so what can we talk about? Uh, list them, fave them. 
comment them, praise them. When you see things like that, it's okay to go to a, let me get this Q&A thing here over here. That's some good questions there. Sorry about that one. I'll, I'll, I'll answer those. The two good questions, we'll get to those. I saw that couldn't work. Um, retweet them, share them, send them swag. By the way, if you identify people, if, 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 if in your intake sessions and in working with your hiring managers and the senior people and the other people on the team, they go, this person is really good. I like their YouTube videos. Send them company swag. You know, get them to start thinking about, hey, I just want to let you know, want to thank you. You've made it, you've influenced many people here. Uh, one of my personal uh, favorite sites for software engineering is letters to a new developer.com. This is where people who are tried and true experts, you know, the, the people, the ones that people look up to, uh, write about, you know, letters to a, a, a new developer. And you know, these are the things that I went through. This is what, you know, you may go through. If you have any questions, please reach out to me. Do things like that. Let me, let me, let me go to the questions. What if you don't know who the leaders are? Let me, uh, let me answer live. Um, you can, I, the person who typed it in, what function are you talking about? Help, help me out on this one. Cause I want to, I want to, uh, or, or, or you can, uh, do it and not put it, put it anonymously because usually you, you can go to, for example, people who win awards, people who speak at conferences are often considered the leaders. And, you know, if you want, uh, you know, no, I, I did say to follow the leaders. Yes. And so <clears throat> you can follow them, you know, if, if you, you know, look, look at a conference, type in, you know, top people to know in, yeah, Glenn says, once you have a few re related names, share the three plus search, three plus search method. We'll get to that one. That, that, that's, that's something else. But, but Glenn's right. You, you, you can look for, you know, top people to follow in uh, logistics, top people to follow in this, top people to follow in that. You can look for conferences. And I don't want to do a share screen yet. Uh, I mean, I, that's for a later date. But do this. The person who's, a, who's, who's, who's uh, asking this question, connect with me, ask me the question, and I'll get it and I'll show you what I mean. And then I'll report back to everybody here. Uh, second thing, what sourcing certification do you recommend someone new to recruiting? New, new to recruiting. Um, that's an interesting question. I have no sourcing certifications. Glenn, I don't believe you have any. Mary, I don't believe you have any. David, I know you don't have any. Um, but you know, if a company is going to take one. There are, there are, there are many you, you, you have to follow, you know, uh, arena, uh, arena has, has, has hers. Shally has his LinkedIn has theirs. Uh, uh, Johnny can't, does Johnny, uh, does Johnny still have it? Yeah. Jo Johnny, uh, social talent has it. Uh, Balaj has it. Air still has it. Thanks Glenn. Um, all these are, are people that we know. And I think the, the, the irony is, I, I suspect some of our material through the years is in there, uh, but try them. You know, you can ask people if it's been helpful or not. Um, yeah, again, I don't have any certifications. I'm, I'm pretty sure Glenn doesn't have any certifications. Um, you know, a certification is nice, but you still have to be inquisitive. You have to be able to use it. So hopefully that answered your question. Yeah, I need to. Yeah, LinkedIn has those as well. You know, certified LinkedIn recruiter. There are sourcing ones, things of that nature. Let me see what we have here. Let me just take care of the done, done, done. The person who asked me anonymously, make sure you connect with me, and I will get on the uh, get on a, on a on a video with you. Uh, okay, take the call. Um. I will do informational interviews, even if somebody, I don't care who you are. I don't, if I, even if I don't have an opening, if somebody who looks interesting wants to have an information interview, I will do that. Um, you can't speak to enough people because you'd never know. You get someone who, uh, you know, may on paper says one thing, the call, an information, information interview. And by the way, I also set it up where 
my hiring managers have been, they believe that um, um, you know, taking informational interviews is really important. Again, part of being a talent advisor or a sourcing advisor, just an advisor in you know, human resources, is getting people, getting your customers to believe in what you want to say and the importance of what you're doing. Other things, uh, create your own Slack channel. Um, you know, there are an inordinate number of Slack channels in, in which you can find people. And I'm going to put in the chat, chat the uh, directory of, uh, let me see if I'm typing it well. I'm an old man. I can't see. Yep, that's one, that one too. This is a directory of Slack channels. Create your own Slack channel. You know, you can create your own blog. You know, reach out. You know, create your own, um, uh, you know, like Ed Hahn has been doing a great job lately on LinkedIn. Uh, it's it's a it's a recruiter friend of ours uh, based in uh, in New Jersey, and he's just giving tips and tricks. You go out there, interact, you know, take the call, you, you know, meet over coffee, meet over happy hour, uh, things of that nature. You know, join you know join any the, the, on the face on, in Facebook. There are a number of great um, groups in which you can share information and learn new things. But this is specifically is, you know, and someone, whether you're looking for accountants or you're looking for salespeople, you know, if someone wants to talk to you, always speak to them. And, and I do human debriefs. Um, I, I'm in on, on, on every uh, technical debrief, interview debrief here at, 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 at Zip. But I also know that if someone wants, I tell them it wants to know specifically what went well and what didn't go well. I will get on a video with that person and do a real human debrief with them. You know, I, I like to say the two most important social media tools are the telephone and the handshake. And by the way, that that's a picture of me at, I think it was Anaheim source con a couple of years back. Um, I don't know if you know what those things are. Those are called pay phones. They're, 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 they're absolutely magic. Um, no, I didn't have hair, Mary. You can tell those of us who know. I, I am still a phone. For, I, I, I would. I still phone people, uh, and that's Kunwar knows that one. So these are the ten fundamentals. Oh, there's one more. Patience. Um, I, I, I've noted earlier that uh, you know most when, when we get back to doing real life you know, conferences, and, and, and I hope to see all of you at, uh, you know, conferences in the future, patience. This is a tough, tough profession. You know, you have hiring managers who you spoke to yesterday. Have you got any more resumes yet? Have you interviewed people? Who am I, can, I, can you send me resumes? You have to calm down. You know, when you're not, when you're going through a period where no one seems to be responding back to you, you have to slow yourself down. And you have to um, hold off the need to just push more stuff out there. And, and, and you have to be able to tell jokes, as Jeremy said. That's, that's a good one. Hey, Jeremy. That's why most of us aren't doctors, because we don't have patience. But the fact of the matter is, because we're in recruiting and sourcing, we really do have patience. We just manifest itself in, a, in, in, a, in very, very you know, different ways. Anyway, on that note, uh, I want to open the floor up to questions. Um, I am going to make sure that some of you, I'm going to read some of the fun things. Uh, Andreas has a, has a, a pretty good comment. He said, I, I think it's important to be able to prioritize your sourcing approach so you don't spend or waste a lot of time on things that aren't going to yield, depending on the time frame, uh, you know, the result. And, and I mean, that's where experience comes in. You, 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 and that's where tracking your data comes in. Incidentally, from a from a data tracking standpoint, um, I track data quarter by quarter. I, I don't have it additive throughout the year. And, you know, uh, 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 after the first quarter is done, all metrics get reset. And the reason I do that is I know there I know there's seasonality, and I know there are economic forces. There are political, especially these days, there are political forces, economic forces, social forces, technological forces that are impacting the results that we're getting. Any questions? Kunwar Reese, you want to come back on? Anyway, any, anybody, can we promote anybody to come on and ask questions? Do we have that ability? 
Yeah. Does anybody want to come on screen and, um, and ask a question? Any thoughts, any feedback, anything that we found remotely helpful, controversial, boiled your blood? Let's see, we have QA. Let's see. How did I become a great sorcerer? I am not a great sorcerer. I am still a learning sorcerer. But if you haven't noticed, you see all this gray hair and no hair. Um, well, when I started, I still, I still ha didn't have any hair. Everything that I wrote in here, it's inquisitiveness. It's going rabbit hole. It's having an insatiable appetite to try to figure out why is it working or why is it not working? Um, you know, um, yeah, Kelly, I'll, that's a good question. I'll get that in a second. But that's what it is. It's time. You have to, you have to embrace the craft. You have to read. I'm a voracious reader. Um, I don't sleep that much nowadays because, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm 97 years old. I know it doesn't look it. Um, and you know, I have T-shirts older than Quinoir. So, you know, there you go. But it's just practice. You know, how do you, there's an old joke. How do you get to Carnegie Hall? Practice, practice, practice. Uh, Kelly, can you expand more on what you meant by IO on websites? I wonder if I can do another screen share on this one. What do you think, Kunwar? Can we do that? Yeah, let me see if I can stop the share here and go to another one here. Uh, give me a second. And I'm going to share. Oh, that's where it is over here. I'm going to go to site IO. And now let me go here and share the screen for Kelly. Let's do this one here. Let's go to, actually, I'm going to go to this screen here. I'm going to go to this tab. Is this large enough to see? Okay, let me, let me make it just a little bit larger for everybody here. What I've done here, Kelly, is you know, I'm looking for site IO. And in this, I mean, let's say I want to, I want, I want to look for resumes. And the, the, the simplest way to do it is to try it like this one here. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to site search. I'm going to site colon IO. Then I'm going to look for all pages that have the word resume in the address bar. And I'm going to look for somewhere on the page. Um, and I could always do in text. I don't really have to. And then I see things like, Oh, a couple of things I notice. I notice that some, I, I see some examples, but here's a good one. I see someone here, practical guide to writing fang ready software engineer resume. And this is a person tech interview handbook, which is kind of neat, but I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna do something better than this one here. I'm gonna go and for example, I mentioned GitHub, if I can spell it, github.io. And this is, you see things like this. You can see Martin Krasser's blog. And in it, it's his resume. He's a machine learning engineer and uh you can click on his resume and let me see where he, where, where he lives. Um, contact, let's go see. Um, oh, but here's the other things. You, you, you could see his LinkedIn profile and a few other things here. So that, that's sort of, I, I, I mean, about that one here. Uh, what's another question here? We have... Um, uh, Jeff, what do you, uh, uh, don't, don't know what, what do you feel is a good rec load to manage effectively? You're going to hate me on this one. It's the one that you can manage. Um, you, 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 you often have to, um, it depends. I, I chunk things together. You know, let's say you have 40 recs, but they, they encompass five job families. Uh, that's sort of managing, you know, five recs. They may be different levels, but chunking them together is is one issue um and and effectively it, it it depends you know each hiring manager is 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 like a if you have a couple of kids in in your family it's like each child is different you love them all eh, but uh, they're different 
Um, Jeremy, I agree with you in your message. Yeah, I like to research the candidate before I call so I can find some common ground. Absolutely. Um, I, I, I found someone yesterday who was a really great uh, SEC engineer, security, security engineer leader. And um, I was putzing around. Oh, and I, I, I found his Twitter um, feed and it had nothing to do with his name, but he had a picture of his cat reading a hacking book. So I sent him a message with that leading off. At the end was a picture of my hat, my cat hacking. And so it's little things like that. It's like, ah, okay, you know, you, you, he may be an idiot, but at least he took the time to, uh, you know, not just say, I love your profile, you're a perfect fit, uh, send me your resume. There's something there. And by the way, and I didn't go and I don't go say, hey, would you like to interview? I just want to say, look, we have a lot in common. Just want to make you aware of this opportunity. You know, Tony says bye. And that was it. Uh, what do you do with resumes or names that you find? Um, well, if it's resumes I find and they're good, I put them into our, you know, ATS CRM and I, and, and I put together a plan to message them and see if I can get them to have, to, to have a conversation. Uh, as far as names are concerned, uh, I will try to enrich them. You can enrich them with higher easy. You can enrich, enrich them with Boolean searching. You can enrich them with a number of other platforms. Uh, Glenn, thanks for that one. Uh, let me see where, out of curiosity, how much of a source of time is spent on active rets and how much time is spent pipeline? It really depends where the company is. Um, uh, if, if you're really in active hiring mode, uh, you're probably almost universally spending the bulk of your time on sourcing. And, uh, but part of that, part of that process is pipelining as well. So even though you find people that may not be you know, might be appropriate right now, you still pipeline them for for future uh, roles. On that note, I think we're out of time, or we're going to be out of time in two minutes. So um, anyone, uh, you know, Glenn, uh, and anybody here who's been answering, uh, uh, typing in the chat with uh, with with information, really good people to contact. Um, if if you you know want to talk to me more about sourcing or anything that has to do with um, sourcing or recruiting, connect with me. Um, I'm going to tell everybody that uh, uh, on my on my LinkedIn profile, I have a lot of presentations that I've done through the years that are there. Um, you may find them helpful. You may find them boorish. Who knows? And uh, when you hear the phrase in mauling, just know that I created it. So on that note... <laughs> Thank you all for coming. And, um, you know, if, if, if you haven't demoed Hyrie's, just give it a shot. That's all we ask. Yep. Thank you so much, everyone. We'll all be in touch. Thanks again, Steve.